99,000, looking for $100,000. $99,000 going once. Bidder number one at $99,000 going twice. Johnny Nichols. My name is Barbara Nichols. We were the founders of uh, uh, Spirit and Life Bible Church in Rome, New York. And uh, the little history of that is we uh, got married when we were very young. And right now we're going on, this is our 50th year that we're going on uh, marriage. And uh, God has used us in the ministries over the years. Uh, we were in our home church in Elkton, Maryland. Pleasant Hill. Uh, we were youth pastors, we were elders, we were uh, choir directors. Sunday school teachers. Sunday school teachers, <laughs> Bible college teachers. We went to Bible college at uh, you know, Spirit and Life Bible College. Uh, then, then they began to send us out. We felt the call of God to do some things that God was speaking to us. We went to uh, Dr. Minor up in uh, Calisport, uh, Pennsylvania to work on his building and we were there working on his building. Something happened to my foot that had that turned black. And so we, the next day we uh, asked uh, Dr. Minor to pray for us, to pray for me, because I was in a lot of pain. And uh, he said, um, told my wife, he's open the door, turn you, put your foot out here, John, let me lay hands on you. 45 minutes later, mm -hmm. uh, he was praying all that time, but he was prophesying right. our life from our what we uh, where we started mm -hmm. in the middle of it and at the end of it what things are going on in our lives that we with the past present and future and uh, everything he prophesied up till now has come to pass everything but the one thing he spoke over me was you're uh, you're going to go north i'm going to send you north to the ice coal and snow and you're going to get good tidings in a few days well that few days came a lady that was in uh, missions in uh, the Antarctic. And the first thing she did when she came, she put her hand on the, on the pulpit, she began to speak, I bring you good tidings from the land of the ice, coal, and snow. So we went to the Newark Library right there. It was brand new at that time, now it's old. But we went to the Newark Library and uh, we pulled down a, a map on the wall and we held hands and we prayed that God would show us where north that he would send us. When I begin to look at the map, it's just like a big bold black letters. Everything else um, blacked out except for Rome, New York. And we didn't know anything about Rome, New York. Never heard of it before. Rome, Italy, but not Rome, New York. <laughs> and the God began to speak very strongly. And we're not gonna do anything until we get a confirmation. And that's when we went back to the home church that um, Brother and Sister Harris, Brother Harris came to me and he says, um, John, and he said, I heard you're going to, uh, going to go north. Wouldn't it be funny if God sent you to Rome, New York? I asked him, I said, how did, why did you say that? He said, we were based at the Griffiths Air Force Base for quite a few years in Rome, and uh, we were praying for God to send somebody here that could really uh, bring a revival. And he says, you're the ones that God's going to send there, and good things are going to happen. Well, we went on the word of the Lord. And the day that we got here, the very day we got here, God moved is on, if I'm not mistaken, it was on a Thursday. We found this place here, uh, laked out the firehouse. Uh, we checked into it and um, we were able to get this uh, Ten dollars a service <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday mornings and uh, Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. and we the first service we had uh, 14 people, and then it got up uh, within a month and a half. It was around 40, 45 people, and how God just moved is miraculous. 
And then we were here three and a half months. We were here, uh, all yeah. together, we were here over six months yeah. in this uh, Lake Delta Fire Barn, and we're so grateful. Here was where the Lord told me how much He loved Rome, and uh, He does love Rome. He loves the people of Rome. Yes. He loves this region. He's interested in this region, and He has a wonderful plan for this whole region. And when we came, we didn't come to replace other pastors, no. but we came to fit in wherever God told us to fit in and whatever God told us to be. On our way into town, into Rome itself, we saw a place, uh, my husband said that would be, that's the place for the church. And uh, we, we thought, well, when the Lord gets ready, then that will be the place. But then we started feeling a stirring idea, started feeling a stirring in my spirit that it was time that we got our own place. And I said, let's go back to the building that we've seen on the way in from Central Square on uh, Route 49. When you first come into this building, you would not have believed it. When you, if you seen it then and you see it now. When we first came in, it was all black. Uh, there was mushrooms, trees growing <laughs> in the floors, in the carpet. The walls were black. We had disco lights, disco lights in the floor, on the back walls. Matter of fact, our daughter, Pastor Pearl, and, and our son-in-law, Pastor Dan, they got married here, and when they got married, somebody accidentally <laughs> turned on the disco lights, and the disco ball started going around and around. So we were having, stand alive, stand alive, stand alive. So, you know, it's uh, it's awesome what the Lord is doing. Right. So many people work so hard and yes. washed chairs and washed walls and painted. Just worked so hard and then the Lord uh, gave the vision to at, put an addition on the back and to pay as we yeah. went and so he provided everything to pay as we went and uh, when we got ready to build Pastor uh, Johnny said we're going to start right now God's given me the vision and this is how big it's going to be and we're going to start right now and uh, uh, the brothers go don't you know it's winter time you don't start building in upstate New York in the winter time but uh, he said, God said to do it and do it now. And because um, he did that, uh, the brothers came on board and they said, yes, we'll do it now. And they put the uh, walls up and they put the beams up, the, uh, the trusses up the old fashioned way. We got a big uh, write up in the paper about that and paid as we went. And God is just, we just saw miracle after miracle. We have been on a journey of miracles. bring us to this uh, where we are now we're just grateful for God's provision and how he worked and uh, the way he showed himself to be so strong and mighty in our midst but you hang on to his word mm -hmm. and he'll never fail that's right <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Sanborn, and this is my wife, Pearl. We pastor here in Rome, New York. Pearl, why don't you tell them about the early years? Well, I remember, I think I was 15, and my brother was 13. My parents and my brother and myself, we came to Rome, and it was kind of a scary situation because we left everything we knew. We left all that was familiar, and we came to a place we didn't know. We had no idea what we were coming to, but we knew that God was bringing us here. So I remember all those years of having tent meetings and different outreaches and the nursing home ministry, the prison ministry, different children's ministries, the diaper giveaway, food giveaway, and so many, so many different things happened. 
And then about 15 years ago when our parents, um, Pastor and Sister Nichols, felt the call of God to go back to Maryland to our home church to pastor, it was a difficult time for us because we were so close and we didn't want to see them leave, but we knew it was the will of God. Three years before they left, there was uh, we had three consecutive years of tent meetings over by the fort. And uh, I'll never forget it. The la I mean, we see how miracles happen. And, and I'll never forget the last night uh, of the tent meetings, there was a gentleman who got up and uh, I, th he, I th believe he was from Western New York somewhere. And, mm -hmm. and he got up and he pointed and he stood right, he was facing us and he stood and he pointed up, up to the center of town. He says, God's gonna give you a building in the center of town. I remember um, November 5th, uh, 2013, Denise Wishley, a uh, realtor in Life Church, hi Denise, uh, texted um, me that morning and said, um, the armory is coming up for auction and um, we might be interested. And I remember texting Pastor Dan and Pastor Pearl and all excited about it, um, about what the possibilities could be here for this facility, because this is what we really felt like this was where God was going to have us. And um, just so it was a text one month before um, the auction was going to take place. November 5th we got a text, we found out, and then December 5th was when the auction took place. And man, just miracle after miracle happened between November 5th and December 5th. And I'm just so thankful for all that God has done. So here we are, sitting in the middle of a miracle. We had no idea how it was going to happen or how it was going to come together, but we knew that God was going to make a way. It was going up for auction and all we had was a dream in our heart. We had the word of the Lord and we had an opportunity finally in front of us. He opened a door that was, uh, I mean, we had to have $10,000 to just show up to the auction mm -hmm. to be able to bid. And we didn't have it. We didn't have it at the time when the auction was, was coming up. And, and so we presented it before the church and in two weeks we were able to raise $10,000. So we felt like that was kind of like seed money. To, to get this uh, journey rolling and we got there and my my wife was encouraging me to you know I, she wanted me to be the first one there she wanted me to have the number one ticket bidding ticket and she wanted me to sit in the front row <laughs> so i can tell you right now i was probably sitting about as from here to my wife about like this from the auctioneer i could almost feel him breathe yeah it was amazing that the day of the auction the, the place was packed actually and there was a lot of people there who, who had interest in the building, but for some reason or another, they decided not to bid. And all the things that the men of God had said to us, you know, be, pray that you have the lowest bid. Pray that, pray that you don't have to pay more than, than the, the minimum bid. And so that's what we did. We all prayed. We said to our church, let's pray that, that God um, has us be the only bidder and that we could get the the bid for the minimum amount, which was $99,000. And so it was a huge step of faith because we had no idea how, how, was, uh, how many people were gonna be there, how much they were gonna bid, how much the final bid was gonna be. But we knew this was supposed to be our, our place. We'd been praying for this building for years, ever since Life Night and ever since that word from the prophet. And, and we've been praying about this space. So we knew it was supposed to be ours, but we had no idea how it was gonna happen. At $99,000, looking for $100,000. Okay, at $99,000 going once. Bidder number one. At $99,000 going twice. I tell you, just step after step, miracle after miracle. That word of the Lord that this is a season of miracles, it's true because step after step, miracles kept happening. People started donating, different churches started sending yes. offerings. Local people in the community would send, send an offering, a donation. But you know, really, we just really wanna say how much our own congregation, it might not be a large congregation as far as some people think, but I tell you what, our congregation has really stepped up. Their, their faith level has grown. Their, their attitude, they all jumped on board and said, if this is what God's saying, Pastor, we're with you, we're behind you, we're going with you. And you know, that's exactly what happened. And, and, and God is just so faithful. He's, uh, he's shown it every step of the way. And even since we've, uh, you know, we've purchased the building, I mean, here we waited on the state, you know, it took six months to actually get them to, 
come to a point where they wanted to close. And, and so they, we didn't, again, we didn't have money to, to close and we wanted to go in debt free. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> cause we didn't want to have the burden of, of a mortgage. So we went ahead and uh, uh, we're sitting there and uh, all of a sudden the, the lawyer calls and he says, how about uh, closing this week? And I just said, okay. <laughs> okay, and so here we are. We're like, I'm, I'm like, okay, now uh, what are we gonna do? So we went ahead, and uh, I was actually outside my house, and I was, I was grilling. I was just outside, and I was thinking about this, and, and uh, a gentleman pulls up in the yard, and, and he say, he comes up to me, and he says, uh, you know, what's going on? You know, what's the deal with the building? I said, well, what do you mean, what's the deal with the building? He said, well, what's the deal with the building? I said, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking me. And he says, how come we haven't closed on it yet? And I said, well, I said. Uh, Number one, we had to wait for the state to call us, and then number two is we're thirty-five thousand dollars short of closing without a mortgage. And he says, uh, "Oh, that's all." He says, "I can do that," and he writes us a check. And, and so, because of the faithfulness of, of, of someone listening to the voice of God and, and grabbing hold of a vision, you know, buying into a vision—that's really what we're doing. We're buying into what God wants to do—a kingdom vision, not a man vision, but a kingdom vision. All the, all the money that's been sold to this point, and we still have to raise more to, for the remodeling, you know, selling the building here and, and remodeling over there. But the bottom line is that it, as long as we keep in perspective that we are sowing into God's vision and His kingdom, that lives are going to be changed in such a miraculous way. So I just wanted to show you that here is a check for $89,100. So we actually, you know, we closed with no mortgage. And, uh, and God said, God spoke to us and he said through an, a man of God, a prophet of God, and he says that we are never to lean on the, on the strength of man. In other words, we're never to go into debt for this building. He said that his signature is on this land and on this, on this property. And we, and, and we give him all the glory. Everything that we do on this property, through this property, this is his. We're just caretakers. And, uh, and, and once we receive the bid and once we won the bid, uh, you know what, I'll tell you, our congregation, our family, our church family, man, they rolled up their sleeves and they just, we, we spent, what, was over almost a, over a year, mm -hmm. every Saturday morning at eight o'clock. And we know sometimes how hard it is. People working all, you know, all week and getting up that early and they came and they would sow their time into working on the building and, and they were so faithful with it. And, uh, and, and I just, uh, I, I tell you, it's not just because they're, they're our flock, but we really, we just have the best. And of, of course, coming from me, you know, uh, I'm, I'm biased. But but they just rolled up their rolled up their sleeves and just got in there, and they, no complaining. And uh, you know, we supplied the donuts, we supplied the coffee, and they just <laughs> and they just kept plugging away. So, and even even the people that were a little like leery at first because they didn't have that that big uh, vision yet, they said we're we're going to go with you, even though we don't we don't see it, we don't know how it's going to happen. And I'll tell you what, people's lives have changed because of it. Because we've been together working on this building, but while we've been working on this building, God has been working on us and He's been growing our faith and growing us together as a community of faith and building our faith, enlarging our vision. And He's, he's just been with us every step of the way.
When God tells you to do something, you have to obey the Lord. Even if you don't know how it's going to happen, if you don't have the money, if you don't see the end result, you need to have faith in God and take that step of faith because God, if He's telling you to do it, He's going to see you through it. And so we're just, we're just so thankful for how God has been here every step of the way. We know that God has a great plan for the city in this upstate region. And uh, we just counted a privilege and honor to be able to be a part of what He wants to do. This area has so much history with, with the spiritual things, with revival, with prayer, with people coming through this area and God speaking and God changing lives. Even at one time with Charles Finney changing the whole city where people's hearts turn to God. And the story of Life Church is over 30 years old already. We started from very humble beginnings with just the four of us and, and, and my family and 32 years ago. And we've progressed on and on and God has brought us even to this place now. But even, even after 32 years, we're just at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're just at the beginning and God has yep. such great plans for this city and for this region. And God's already been in our tomorrow. And so He's leading us by faith and we just have to believe in Him and walk in the steps He's calling us to walk in. And when He sees when He sees us, He already sees the end of a thing. And so we just have to have the faith of God to believe that what He says He will accomplish. And so we're looking forward to what God has in store. We don't know, but He knows. And so we can trust in Him to know what the future holds. And so we're excited for Life Church, for Rome, New York, for this region. And we're just saying, God, thank you. Thank you for being there with us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for providing for us. And we're just praying that God's gonna bless the people of this house and bless the people of this community.